now we turn to the latest chapter out of Gainesville, Florida. The repercussions from a pastor's threat to set fire to the Koran tomorrow. On this eve of the 9-11 anniversary, Terry Moran reports from Gainesville. It just gets stranger and stranger. A local Gainesville rabbi showed up out front of Pastor Terry Jones's church today blowing a ram's horn to get some attention. He did, and so once again did Pastor Jones. As of this time, we have not heard from the Imam, but we are still very, very hopeful uh, that we will meet with him. Thronged by an ever-growing media mob, Jones was demanding a meeting with the New York Imam building the Islamic Center near Ground Zero. As for his plan to burn the Quran, that's off, as Jones's son made clear. There will be no Quran burning tomorrow. I don't know. Do we have to repeat that over and over and over what again? About later? What about later? If it all seems to have degraded into something like comedy here in Gainesville, I'm here as a mediator, a peacemaker. It is already deadly serious around the world. Protests erupted in five cities across Afghanistan where crowds chanted death to America and three people were shot. And there were smaller, more peaceful protests in Pakistan, Jerusalem, and London. General David Petraeus told ABC's Martha Raddatz in Afghanistan today that Pastor Jones has hurt U.S. interests abroad. Uh, there has been some damage done. You've seen it. There are already, in a sense, images, if you will, implanted in minds, albeit not with photos of something as inflammatory as the burning of a Koran. And in Washington, President Obama spoke as commander-in-chief for the troops in the field. This is a way of endangering our troops, our sons and daughters. You don't play games with that. And so Terry Jones's plan to burn the Quran tomorrow is off. But the damage has been done. He's benefited, though. There's no question about that. He's gained worldwide attention for his financially troubled little church here, and he's gained a measure of celebrity as well. And he plans right now to be in New York City for September 11th. Diane? Well, picking up on that very thing, Terry, as you know, you're well aware, we've all been wrestling with the question about this modern media nation. And so we asked David Muir to take another look at whether all this attention just encourages incendiary approaches. This is what the Muslim so many of you have emailed us asking why have we paid so much attention to this lone pastor in Florida? Not just the media, but the White House, cabinet secretaries, an American general. The media needs to step off, wrote one of you. They are blowing this whole thing up and giving this nutbag in Florida his moment of fame. Even worse, some argue, it encourages others. It's really disturbing to think of what are the copycat stunts we are going to be encouraging by having um, the Secretary of Defense call him, having General Petraeus insert himself in this, the Commander-in-Chief discussing what he should do or should not do. In fact, there have already been copycat threats in Kansas, Wyoming, Tennessee. But ignoring this story and the pastor's rhetoric, others argue, would have been nearly impossible. Especially when you see how quickly it spread in this Internet age, starting with the posting of his intent to burn the Koran on Facebook, picked up by an Egyptian newspaper, then an Arab cable station, then CNN. And by Labor Day, when our correspondent called from Kabul with word of Muslims protesting. Tonight, an American general is warning that the pastor's words could put our troops in harm's way. Do you ignore the unrest, the danger? Some argue you don't, but that you have to report it for what it is. Call it what it is, which is a stunt by a hate monger who's trying to gain attention here in the United States. And today when the president addressed the debate, Jake Tapper asked him, was he concerned that the administration elevated the pastor by reaching out to him? I, I, I hardly think uh, we're the ones who elevated this story. Uh, but it is in the age of uh, the Internet something that can cause us profound damage around the world and so we've got to take it seriously. If public officials, if religious leaders don't speak out against these kinds of things, uh, that's the message that will be heard. But many argue that hateful message already traveled the world. The only debate now with how much help. David Muir, ABC News, New York.